Welcome back to the Homeschool Advantage Podcast. I'm your host, Bex Buzzy. Today's guests are Jennifer Mercer and Jill Pearson Keltner. They are the founders of Learning Journeys Forum. Jennifer has been working with youth since she was 16 years old. She has spent the past 30 years developing and growing her skills in many different ways as a classroom teacher, special education teacher, lead teacher, college instructor, tutor, Girl Scout leader, mentor, and group facilitator. Jennifer homeschooled her two daughters, experimenting with philosophies from classical school at home to the radical unschooling to the Learner Center co-designing. Jill has also taught, and she has taught students at all different levels, from preschool through university and impoverished to wealthy neighborhoods. She taught in traditional programs and homeschooled her two children from kindergarten to 12th grade. She endeavors to dialogue with students and engage them in creation of their own learning journey. In this episode, we talk about how your kids are brilliant. Let them have some power over their learning journeys. Also, how Learning Journey Forum is focused on empowering learners by co-designing learning with their students. And lastly, how their co-design process helps all learners access their classes in a way that works best for them. So go grab your coffee, go grab your tea and a pen and paper because you're not going to want to miss what Jennifer and Jill have to say. Let's get into the podcast. Say hello to our guests and tell us what's a fun fact about your industry that will really surprise our listeners. Hi, I'm Jill. And one of the things that we really care about in our teaching is that instead of telling kids what to do, our goal is to give them agency and to teach them how to make the learning journey their own instead of just following along with what they're supposed to do, which is what often happens in a traditional classroom. Hi, I'm Jennifer. We call it co-design and the programs that we provide homeschoolers, we really provide opportunities for kids to not only have voice, but let them design their own learning. That's awesome. So can you unpack that a little bit more? Because I'm I'm sure that there's some parents that might think like, are they doing whatever they feel like it? And I know that's not what you guys are doing. <laughs> so one of the things that we really work on is helping the kids create intentional learning journeys. And we support families in doing this. So we meet with families to co-design their learning so that they're making goals, they're setting plans, we figure out how to achieve those goals, and we teach both parents and kids how to do this so that they can make the learning journey really what they want as opposed to what is imposed on them. So we really start from a place of curiosity and wonder, finding out what the learner is fascinated by, curious about, wondering about, passionate about, and then marrying that with the needs and hopes and values that the parents have as well. And so then as a family unit, they can co-design together what that learning will look like. That's so cool. It just, it just makes me think of when I want to start homeschooling my kids, I'm like, I am so going to be like the unschooler. Like my (laughs) child is like, they're going to be like, what are they doing? I'm like, you don't know. We, we don't know what we're doing. <laughs> so I love that. Yeah, I, I am a firm believer in, and I guess maybe because of the way I learned made me feel so strongly about it. Like most of my schooling years, I completely sucked at English and completely sucked at history. And I hated it growing up. Like whenever that subject came, I was just like, oh. I can't stand this subject, you know? And when I got to college, it was a completely different ball game. I remember now I like the plague. I avoided history. Mm-hmm. I'm not going mean, to, I can't say that I was just like, oh. but I minored in art and I had to take an art history class. And I just remember going, oh my God, you're going to ruin art for me too. Like it's going to be the worst, but it was actually in that class that I learned history 
I understood economics of in history. I understood like why they used a certain type of paint and why they did the 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 architecture a certain way. It actually helped me understand like the period, the the era. Like it literally made everything so like clear to me. And you know, I thought back. I'm like, man, imagine I could have really had my my education like fashioned around art like I'm very artsy like I love art like I'm very creative I make things and I can just create things without having a blueprint I just I don't know how I know how to do it I just do and if I would have been able to like just work towards that all my I mean wow I probably would have loved history I would love to learn the history of woodworking the history of this you know what I'm saying like that to me would have been so fascinating. So I love what you do by, you know, connecting with parents and finding out where the kids' strengths are at and and working that. And, and again, yeah, their strengths can change, but then so can, you know, the schooling. It could be fluid. Like learning is learning. It doesn't, that to me doesn't need to be like this massively, like it has to be this. Like your kid might like art in the beginning, but they like might like music later on. Maybe they might like finance later on. They could still learn all the subjects through their, through the, their interests. And I am such a firm believer and I love, love, love. So what, what inspired you guys to do that? That's a great question. So we have really similar stories, Joe and I, but we, you know, as teachers, we knew and know what good pedagogy is and best practices, you know, with regards to learning. And it wasn't really happening in the programs that our kids were involved in especially when our kids hit high school age and we were homeschooling parents as as well. So when our homeschooled high schoolers were looking for quality classes and to continue as high school learners with co-design and having agency in their learning and the pro classes that were out there just weren't doing that for them. They weren't rigorous and they weren't as fun and they weren't as tailored to mm. their interests. So Jill and I were like, we can do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I think as we worked with our own kids, you know, all the way through, we were homeschoolers. And what we learned by homeschooling our own kids is the benefits of teaching them that agency to direct their own learning and what can come out of that. So in addition to the classes we do consulting and we've got a, you know, kind of a trail guide planner that we created. And the purpose of both of those is to follow what the kids really want. So for example, I have one, one of my kids is passionate about filmmaking. And so everything he did was mm. all about film always. And the other kid loved a whole bunch of different things. So he played soccer and he played chess and he did mock trial, but it gave <laughs> a chance to do all those things which he never could have done or had time for in a regular school yeah yeah you're right it's impossible to, for you know a kid who has diverse you know interests or even a focus interest unless by chance you know luckily they luck of the draw they're able to learn it in a, in a traditional school which is very rare the the curriculums in the traditional schools are not geared for students they're geared for the teacher who has to teach 20 plus kids and it has to be easy enough for the slowest learner and you know then we get to we get a chance to add a couple of things here and there to challenge our, you know, more gifted learners. So it's, it's not very, you know, it's, it's so sad to say like the more I, I stop and just, you know, ponder and think about, you know, the public school education, it's just, it's so, it's so barely subpar. Like it's just barely subpar. And I'm, I'm a public school teacher. Like I, I think at my curriculum and I'm thinking, man, even when I try to make it more rigorous or I try to make it more fun, like legitimately, if I should make it more fun and add some things to it, I get a lot of pushback and it's like, wow, you know, like what happened here? But <laughs> I love what you guys are doing also. 
I want to read just one of your testimonies for just at this very moment, because it stuck out to me. It's by one of your students, one of the students that, that is with you. She says, being able to learn under Jennifer and Jill has really benefited my education these last two years in high school. Now, I don't know many high schoolers who speak like that. <laughs> and like in, in my experience they provide wonderful they provide a wonderful learning environment and we always have fun no matter what and she's 17 years old now that's beautiful that a 17 year old girl is still having fun in education is understanding what quality education is by saying she benefited by understanding it. So I think that's really awesome. And I understand that your program, since it's a co-design process, helps every individual learner, right? Absolutely. I think that there are a couple of really neat things about that. One is that I, our students say things like they get to come to our classes. They don't have to come to our classes. Wow. And that that's an exciting piece for them. And then as far as how co-design really allows us and the learners to, you know, just meet people where they're at. And we have small classes. We have the ability to individualize, like I said, meet kids where they're at, tailor assignments and approaches and the learning itself to what works best for each kid. One of the things we really want to do is empower kids to direct joyful learning. We always sign everything off joyful learning. So we're a non-coercive program. So we tell kids, if you don't want to be here, don't come. You're a homeschooler. You can go home. But the benefit is they usually want to be there, which is, is wonderful. And that's what I would hope education would always be is a, a, a place where people want to learn and kids want to to do these things in order to learn and experience that excitement of learning. Yeah. You know, education absolutely should be that because education is, it's, it's really sad that I I remember being excited about learning up until I was like, I think in, I think third grade was the last time I was excited about learning. I remember specifically third grade, my last time being excited about learning and then went through up to high school, graduated high school, And then my next time being excited about learning was when I was in college and it wasn't even until like I found my, my major, the one that I was really excited about. And that's when I got excited about learning again. So, and and my grades actually show it. Like if you look at my grades, like I was an excellent student. I mean, I was way above in third grade. Like I walked into kindergarten reading and writing and, you know, two different languages and then third grade comes and it's just something happened there. Like just something happened. It declined and back to college grades went back up and just because it, it didn't feel like I was being, like you said, coerced or forced, even though I had to, you know, I had times tables, I had things to get done, but this is what I wanted to do. And I, I wanted to put the effort and I was so excited about it. And that's what school, that's what, I, no, I'm not going to say school, scratch that. That's what education is about, right? That the joy, the fun, the, the wonder, the, it's just the curiosity, the yeah. more questions that what happens next, you know, it's like a mystery novel, you know, like detective. That's how I see education now as an adult. And I wish I would have seen it like that all my life. So, you know, I, I just thank you ladies for what you're doing and just taking this on. So I want to read the next testimony because I feel like it fits right now. It says, I look forward to Jen and Jill's class every week, classes every week. They are in tune with what we want to learn and make even the mundane, the most mundane subjects interesting. I never feel bored or lost in class. They are my favorite teachers and gifts to a world of boring, uninspired educators. (laughs) 16 year old. That's hysterical. (laughs) But that's really nice for a teenager to say. So where can people connect with you ladies? Where can they find your program, connect with you, have a conversation? 
They can connect with us on the web at www.learningjourneysforum.com, Facebook and Instagram at the same handle. And we are located in Kearney Mesa. You're like right here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so uh, that's where our classes are. So um, yeah, we're pretty accessible from lots of areas in San Diego. You're really close to me. <laughs> <laughs> like, Come by you're... and visit with us. Yeah. I think I might because it's so funny. I had another episode that the girl lives down the block from me. Oh, oh that's funny. And you guys are like 10 minutes away from me. Like, <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> that's just our, I'm surprised we haven't even like walked into Cross each other. <laughs> yeah. Like, that is funny. Oh my gosh. That's, yeah. I, that's hysterical. Awesome. Yeah, on, our, on our website, we have information about our classes and our consulting, but then we also have some resources, some are free and, and some are not, <laughs> but there is information about ways to develop agency with your kid and questions like that help develop agency and that sort of thing. And just suggestions of ways you can work with your kids in co-design and all of these things we've been talking about. Awesome. So now just to, to get it really, really clear. So are you guys specifically in person or do you have like an online presence or is like the online thing or is online where you would just strictly help parents alone and in person is where you're able to do both? I'm trying to make sure I get that clear. Kind of a combination. Our classes are in person, although, you know, if, one, if COVID taught us one thing, it's how to work with Zoom. So we had two two learners who were sick this week and this morning and had to, but we were able to Zoom them into our English class, for example. So we make those accommodations when that's necessary. And that's a really nice way for them to be able to stay connected when they want to be able to do that. For the most part, our classes are in person. We meet with parents if they're local. We'll meet with parents in person if that's what they would like. But we also work remotely, so we, we do sometimes work with families that are outside of San Diego or in San Diego and, and parents. A lot of times when we're meeting with parents, they prefer to meet on Zoom at a time when kids are off doing something else and they can have some privacy or shut themselves in a closet to talk, <laughs> so, you know, whatever it takes. <laughs> so we'll do both. And the other thing that we do in person is we um, have an annual LEAP. It's called the LEAP Homeschool Conference. Um and that is also in Kearney Mesa. And it's a time for families, both parents and kids to come. So we have workshops for the kids that are really fun, like D&D &D figure painting and art classes and chess classes. And then for the parents, we have parenting and homeschooling sorts of classes. So we have some great speakers. So that's always in February. And it's a, a great connection time for homeschooling families. Oh, cool. Very cool. Awesome. So as we're wrapping this up, what is one big takeaway you want to leave with our listeners? I think the big takeaway is you and your kids have power over your learning journeys and can make them what you want them to be. Is that okay? Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Jennifer's Sorry. like, yes. <laughs> Jennifer's like, yes, that's exactly right. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And awesome. And also, I just saw here if if our listeners mention this podcast, they get a free half hour consultation and a download of your trail guide planner. Yes. That is awesome. Fantastic. It was really great talking to you, ladies. It's been awesome just getting to know you and just hearing your heart. And just seeing the amazing things you're you're doing with with these teenagers. I'm gonna read the last one as we're closing out. It says, I cannot recommend Learning Journeys Forum enough. They accept charter funds and the classes have been life-changing for my teens. Jen and Jill have been so great with my teens, really making their transition into high school classes and a new city easier. Well, they are astounding at accommodating different classroom needs and learning styles. This is by a homeschooling parent. Fantastic. Ladies, thank you so much for coming on and just sharing all of your wisdom and all of your knowledge. And just, I could just feel the peace coming off of you, honestly. So thank you so much. Well, thank you for having us.
If you love the conversations we're having here on the Homeschool Advantage podcast, follow or subscribe our podcast to stay in the loop and never miss this amazing content. And please highly consider taking a minute to leave a positive rating and review to help others like you discover this show. See you next time.